guys, it's Miss Karen, the Young Adult Librarian at the Goshen Public Library, back again with some new boxes of books to share with you. Today I have two boxes, as you can see. They're small, uh, so I don't know how many books exactly will be in them, but um, we'll check it out and see. All right, let's get to our first one. I also have a few ARCs I'm going to share with you that I just got um, when we get to the end. So let's see what's in this first one. Let's get her out. All right, first book. In our box is Sanctuary by Paola Mendoza and Abby Scher. And if I had to guess, I would say this is probably realistic fiction, but you never know. So let's see. It's 2032, and in this near future America, all citizens are chipped and everyone is tracked on buses, in grocery stores, everywhere. It's almost impossible to survive as an undocumented immigrant, but that's exactly what 16 year old Valley is doing. She and her family have carved out a stable, happy life in small-town Vermont. But when Valley's mother's counterfeit chip starts malfunctioning and the deportation force raids their town, they're forced to flee. Now on the run, Valley and her family are desperately trying to make it to her Tia Luna's in California, a sanctuary state that is currently being walled off from the rest of the country. But when Valley's mother is detained before their journey even really begins, Valley must carry on with her younger brother across the country to make it to safety before it's too late. In this gripping and urgent novel, co-authors Paola Mendoza and Abby Scher have crafted a narrative that is as haunting as it is hopeful in envisioning a future where everyone can find sanctuary. So this is a near future, 2032, not that far off. A um, little bit of science fiction with the chips, um, but and also a little probably dystopian. So. That sounds interesting. Check out Sanctuary by Paola Mendoza and Abby Scher. Let's see what else we've got. Next in our box is this fun pink book called The Teen Killers Club by Lily Sparks. This definitely looks interesting. Uh, the quote on the front is sick, twisted, fast-paced fun. Framed for the murder of her best friend, a young girl joins a super secret society of teenage assassins to avoid a lifetime behind bars and discovers her true self. 17 year old Signal Deer has raised eyebrows for years as an unhappy goth misfit from the trailer park. When she's convinced of, I'm sorry, when she's convicted of her best friend Rose's brutal murder, she's designated a class A, the most dangerous and manipulative criminal profile. To avoid prison, Signal signs on for a secret program for 18 and under class A's and is whisked off to an abandoned sleepaway camp where she and seven bunkmates will train as assassins. Yet even in the teen killers club, Signal doesn't fit in. She's squeamish around blood, she's kind and empathetic, and her optimistic attitude is threatening to turn a group of ragtag maniacs into a team of close-knit friends. Maybe that's because Signal's not really a killer, she was framed for Rose's murder and only joined the program to escape, track down Rose's real killer, and clear her name. But Signal never planned on the sinister technologies that keep the campers confined. She never planned on the mysterious man in the woods determined to pick them off one by one, and she certainly never planned on falling in love. Signal's strategy is coming apart at the seams as the true killer prepares to strike again in the teen killer's club. This is definitely a thriller, a bit of a mystery, um, sounds like a fun uh, read. So that's Teen Killers Club by Lily Sparks. Next we have Queen's Council Rebel Rose by Emma Theriel, which definitely looks like a uh, fairy tale retelling. Torn between two worlds, neither of which she truly belongs to. It's 1789, and France is on the brink of revolution. Belle has broken the Enchantress's curse, restoring the beast to his human form, and bringing life back to their castle in the Principality of Avion. But in Paris, the, fi the fires of change are burning, and it's only a matter of time before the rebellion arrives on their doorstep. Not so very long ago, Belle dreamed of leaving her provincial home for a life of adventure. Now she finds herself living in a lush palace, torn between her past as a commoner and her future as royalty. While Belle grapples with her newfound position, there are those who would do anything to keep her from power. When she stumbles across a magic mirror that holds a dire warning, Belle wants nothing more than to ignore the mysterious voice calling her to accept a crown she never desired. 
But when violent factions of the revolution may already be lurking within her own castle, and doing nothing would endanger everything she holds dear. With the fate of her country, her love, and her life at stake, Belle must decide if she is ready to embrace her own strength and the magic that ties her to so many female rulers before her to become the queen that she is meant to be. This captivating new series reimagines Disney's princesses as rulers in their own right, woven together throughout history by a mystical force known as the Queen's Council. So this is a, a Beauty and the Beast retelling um, after the uh, end of the story, so kind of find out what happens after Belle um, uh, frees the beast. Uh, and it sounds like it is the beginning of a new series of um, other reimagining the Disney princesses. So if you um, really like fairy tales and want to keep reading about the uh, characters in them, uh, remember the Queen's Council. It sounds like there'll be more to come. So this one is Rebel Rose. Um, and I will keep you up to date if I hear of any other ones. But Rebel Rose by Emma Theriault. And the last book in this box is This Is Not a Ghost Story by Andrea Portis. So it's got that creepy house. Definitely looks like a creepy read. So. Daffodil Turner has plans for a quiet summer before her freshman year at college. And luckily she's found the job that can give her just that. House sitting a mansion for a wealthy couple in town. The house itself is gorgeous. A sprawling, dreamy escape tucked away in the countryside surrounded by acres of hills and connected to town by a long, winding dirt road. But as the summer progresses and shadows lengthen, Daffodil comes to realize that the house is more than it appears. The spacious home seems to close in on her, and as she takes the long road into town, she feels eyes on her the entire way, and something tugging her back. What Daffodil doesn't yet realize is that her job comes with a steep price. The house has a long ago grudge it needs to settle, and Daffodil is the key to settling it. So, hmm, definitely sounds creepy. The back of it says, I am not welcome. Somehow I know that. Something doesn't want me here. Whatever this is, it is saying to me in a voice that cannot be heard but only felt, get out. So definitely a creepy read. Probably don't want to read that if you are by yourself in the house. So let's put these books back in that box and move them in there and get to our next box. Let's see. What's in this one? If you want to check any of these books out, you can look for them in the catalog or you can give me a call and I will put them aside for you. Um, everything is available to put on hold. So if you see something that sparks your interest, please put it on hold. All right, so the first book we have in this box is called Little White Lies, and it is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And if you guys remember a few um, boxes ago, I unboxed um, another book called uh, Deadly Little Scandals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Deadly Little Scandals was the sequel. I'm not sure why they sent them to me uh, so far apart. But Little White Lies is the um, first book in this um, pair of books. So let's find out what Little White Lies by Jennifer Lynn Barnes is about. I'm not saying this is Sawyer's fault, the prim and proper one said delicately, but 18-year-old auto mechanic Sawyer Taft did not expect her estranged grandmother to show up at her apartment door and offer her a six-figure contract to participate in debutante season. And she definitely never imagined she would escape. Like, sorry. And she definitely never imagined she would accept. But when she realizes that immersing herself in her grandmother's society might mean discovering the answer to the biggest mystery of her life, her father's identity, she signs on the dotted line and braces herself for a year of makeovers, big dresses, bigger egos, and a whole lot of bless your heart. The one thing she doesn't expect to find is friendship. But as she's drawn into a group of debutantes with scandalous, dangerous secrets of their own, Sawyer quickly discovers that her family isn't the only mainstay of high society with skeletons in their closet. There are people in her grandmother's glittering world who are not what they would appear. And no one wants Sawyer poking her nose into the past. 
as she navigates the twisted relationships between her new friends and their powerful parents, Sawyer's search for the truth about her own origins is just the beginning. Set in the world of debutante balls, grand escapes, and rolling green hills, Little White Lies combines a charming setting, a classic fish-out-of-water story, and this sort of layered mystery only author Jennifer Lynn Barnes can pull off. So that is Little White Lies by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. A little bit of mystery, um, a little bit of high society. And then the second book after that is Deadly Little Scandals, um, which is, uh, I'm not going to read you what this is about because I don't want to spoil anything that happens in Little White Lies, but you can get both of them now. So um, this one first, this one second. All right, let's put this aside. Next, we have This Will Be Funny Someday by Katie Henry. All right, so maybe a funny book. A girl walks into a bar, then onto a stage and up to the mic. 16-year-old Izzy is used to keeping her thoughts to herself, in school where her boyfriend does the talking for her, and at home where it's impossible to compete with her older siblings and high-powered parents. When she accidentally walks into a stand-up comedy club and performs, the experience is surprisingly cathartic. After the show, she meets Mo, an aspiring comic who's everything Niz Izzy's not bold, confident, and comfortable in her own skin. Mo invites Izzy to join her friends and introduces her to the Chicago open mic scene. The only problem? Her new friends are college students, and Izzy tells them she's one too. Now Izzy, the dutiful daughter and model student, is sneaking out to perform stand-up with her comedy friends, and she can hardly remember all the lies she's telling to keep her two lives separate. Her controlling boyfriend is getting suspicious, and her former best friend knows there's something going on. But Izzy loves comedy and this newfound freedom. As her two parallel lives collide in the most hilarious of ways, Izzy must choose to either hide what she really wants and who she really is, or finally stand up for herself. Acclaimed author Katie Henry delivers a poignant and laugh-out-loud coming-of-age story about a girl trying to find her voice in a world constantly trying to quiet it. So this is a realistic fiction um, about a girl who is trying to find herself and figure out what she really wants out of life. Um, sounds like it might be a little funny, probably a little touching, and definitely a good read. So this will be funny someday by Katie Henry. All right, let's see what else we have. Next we have Winter Keep by Kristen Cashor. Winter Keep is the fourth book in um, the Graceling series. Um, and if you haven't read the Graceling series, it's an older series. So Graceling we have here, this is the first one. The second one is called Fire. Um, then the third one is Bitter Blue. And Winter Keep is the fourth one. Now they are um, loosely tied together. Um, in that they take place in the same world. Graceling and Fire um, share characters. Um, and then at the very end of Fire, we meet Bitter Blue. Um, and then Bitter Blue, I believe, is also in Winter Keep. If I, um, yeah, this is the second part of Bitter Blue's story, Winter Keep. Now, if you haven't read Graceling, it's absolutely one of my favorite, favorite, favorite fantasy books. So I would recommend that you read that one. Um, I don't think you have to read Graceling and Fire to um, really understand Winter Keep. I do think you probably should read um, Bitter Blue first um, before you check out Winter Keep. But if you are familiar with the Graceling world, this is the latest um, book in that series. Um, Bitter Blue is described as a sequel to Graceling and a companion to Fire. Uh, so. I would say if you want to read Winter Keep, go back and start with Graceling, but if you don't want to, you definitely should go back and start at least with Bitter Blue. Um, I'm going to tell you what Graceling is about because like I said, it's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite fantasy books. Um, and then maybe you can decide if you're interested in starting the series. So Graceling by Kristen Cashore. His eyes... Kat, Katza had never seen such eyes. One was silver and the other gold. They glowed in his sun-darkened face, uneven and strange. 
She was surprised that they hadn't shown in the darkness of their first meeting. They didn't seem human. Then he raised his eyebrows a hair and his mouth shifted into the hint of a smirk. He nodded at her just barely and it released her from the spell. Cocky, she thought. Cocky and arrogant, this one. And that was all there was to make of him. Whatever game he was playing, if he expected her to join him, he would be disappointed. In a world where people in a world where people born with an extreme skill called a grace are feared and exploited, Katza carries the burden of a skill she despises, the grace of killing. She lives under the command of her uncle Randa, king of the Midlands, and is expected to execute his dirty work, punishing and torturing anyone who displeases him. When, when she first meets Prince Poe, who is graced with combat skills, Katza has no hint of how her life is about to change. She never expects to become Poe's friend. She never expects to learn a new truth about her own grace or about a terrible secret that lies hidden far away, a secret that could destroy all seven kingdoms with words alone. So Graceling is just a really, really, really great fantasy book. So um, start with this one, um, then check out Fire and Bitter Blue, and then the newest one, Winter Keep, which we just got. All right. Next, next we have Garden of Thorns and Light by Shyla Adante. All right, and this one's not too thick. Looks like a fantasy book, if I had to guess. Um, so let's see. When Amethyst Fay was six years old, she was almost stolen by a monster in the woods. On the same night, her mother mysteriously disappeared. Ten years, a half a dozen psychiatrists, and a slew of diagnoses haven't made things any better. She's still plagued by nightmares, ridiculed at school, and misunderstand, misunderstood by everyone from her teachers to her counselor to her father. And lately, she's been sprouting thick green thorns out of her skin. When the paranoia doesn't end and the treatment options run out, she's faced with a choice between inpatient treatment or spending the summer with a grandmother she hasn't heard from in a decade. Summer at Grand's in Morgan Springs wins out, just barely and only because a backwater town sounds marginally more interesting than a mental institution. Amethyst draws the attention of Ben, the boy of her dreams, and Absinthe, the creature from her nightmares. Although neither of them is what she expected, Amethyst realizes both Ben and Absinthe are exactly what she needs to heal her heart and harness the fairy magic she has inherited. Unfortunately for Amethyst, trying to walk both paths could get her killed, but having to choose between them is far worse. So this is a fantasy book about a girl who is sprouting thorns out of her skin, which sounds very interesting. So check out Garden of Thorns and Light by Shyla Dante. All right, we have one more book in here, and this one I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for because it is the latest book from Angie Thomas, and it is called Concrete Rose. Um, if, for those of you who have read The Hate You Give, this is a companion book. To the Hate You Give, um, and it is Angie Thomas's latest book. Let's see what it's about. If there's one thing 17-year-old Maverick Carter knows, it's that a real man takes care of his family. As the son of a former gang legend, Mav does, does that the only way he knows how, dealing for the king lords. With this money, he can help his mom, who works two jobs while his dad's in prison. Life's not perfect, but with a fly girlfriend and a cousin who always has his back, Mav's got everything under control. Until, that is, Maverick finds out he's a father. Suddenly he has a baby, seven, who depends on him for everything. But it's not so easy to sling dope, finish school, and raise a child. So when he's offered the chance to go straight, he takes it. In a world where he's expected to amount to nothing, maybe Mav can prove he's different. When King Lord blood runs through your veins, though, you can't just walk away. Loyalty, revenge, and responsibility threaten to tear Mav apart especially after the brutal murder of a loved one. He'll have to figure out for himself what it really means to be a man. International phenomenon Angie Thomas revisits Garden Heights 17 years before the events of The Hate You Give in this searing and poignant exploration of black boyhood and manhood. So this takes place before The Hate You Give. Um, Concrete Rose, the latest by Angie Thomas. So check this one out. I am sure that it is an awesome read. All right, so those are our new books that will be added to the collection. I have three arcs that I just got from Scholastic. 
So I'm going to show you those. Um, if you're interested in checking out any of the books that we're adding to the collection, you can um, ask for them in the catalog, you can call me, uh, you can email me, whatever works best for you, and we'll arrange to have them ready for you at the pickup window or hopefully um, back in the building before you know it. Um, but if you are interested in one of the ARCs that I'm about to tell you about, an ARC means advanced reader's copy. So these are books that are not available yet um, in final form, but we have the advanced copies. If you're interested in any of these, um, call or email me and let me know, and I will uh, let you borrow one. Uh, these are not in the catalog, so you can't search for them, and they're not print published yet, so nobody else will have them. So this one is, the first one is called... Zara Hossein is here by Sabina Khan. Um, it comes out in April of 2021. So let's see what this one's about. <clears throat> Ever since her family moved to Texas from Pakistan when she was a baby, 17-year-old Zara Hossein has only ever called Corpus Christi home. Being the only Muslim girl at her conservative Catholic school, blending in isn't really an option, especially with people like Tyler Benson always tormenting her. But one day, Tyler takes things too far by defacing Zara's locker with a racist message, which, which gets him suspended. As an act of revenge, Tyler and his friends vandalize the Hossein's home with Islamophobic graffiti, which leads to a violent crime that puts Zara and her family's entire future at risk. Now she must choose between fighting to stay in the only place she's ever called home or losing the life she loves and everyone in it. So this is a realistic fiction. Um... Zara Hossein is here by Sabina Khan. It will be published in April of 2021, but I have it here, so if you want to read it early, let me know. Next, we have The Boy Who Failed Show and Tell by Jordan Sonnenblick, and this one will be available February 2nd, 2021, so it'll be published soon, um, but if you want to read it first, let me know. In a typical school year, every kid has one or two things go wrong. For Jordan, there's a lot going wrong all the time. Take this year. Here are some of the things going wrong. His teacher hates him, like really hates him, like is totally out to get him, even when he's trying to be good, and is willing to fail him for the simplest things, like show and tell. He has a slight breathing problem because of his asthma, and breathing is never really an optional activity. His pet snake has given birth to way, way, way too many baby snakes who all need a home. He is finding that becoming the world's best drummer in no time whatsoever is maybe not the easiest goal. There are bullies ready to stomp him when all he has to defend himself is a lunchbox. And all this doesn't even include the freak swing set accident, the fears inside his head, or the funniest class presentation ever. By keeping his cool some of the time, banging on the drums a lot, and keeping his sense of humor all of the time. Jordan's going to try to make it through the year and grow up to write a book about it. So this is The Boy Who Failed Show and Tell by Jordan Sonnenblick. Um, sounds funny. Uh, so if you want to check this one out, let me know. And the last uh, advanced copy I have is called I Am Defiance by Jenny L. Walsh. Um, looks like historical fiction. Uh, it is also available February um, 2021, um, or will be published February 2021. So if you want to read it early, let me know. Bridget tries not to ask questions. They don't seem very welcome at her League of German Girls meetings, where she and her friends learn about the duties of Hitler's war effort. But she can't help asking questions when a mysterious pamphlet appears in her mailbox, a pamphlet full of words like resistance and freedom, from a group that calls itself the White Rose. Bridget's father and older sister, Angelica, seem to agree with the forbidden papers, an opinion that is dangerous even to whisper at home. And when Angelica becomes involved with secret resistance efforts, Bridget's questions only bloom. Could Angelica really be connected to the White Rose? Is Bridget's family in danger of being arrested? And if she chooses a side, will Bridget be able to take a stand? So this is World War II historical fiction. I Am Defiance by Jenny L. Walsh be published in February 2021 but we have it here now if you want to read it early. So those are my three advanced copies. I have other um, advanced copies um, of books that have already been published. Um, the publishers aren't sending out as many advanced copies so 
I don't get them as often, but um, I will try to include them in the unboxing videos whenever I have some new ones. All right. So if you have any questions about any of the books, feel free to give us a call or send me an email. Um, if not, you can look for any of them in the catalog, and I hope that you found something you like. I will be back as soon as I have more books to show you. Have a great week. Bye.